This week, three sides of the coin. We've got a hoarder on the show, and he um, and and he shares all the details of what it's like to be a hoarder, and why you can't get upset when stuff leaks, and why you can't do anything about it when it leaks. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Sorry. Shut up, Ed. <clears throat> Hello! <laughs> That's right. Go sit on the couch and be quiet. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I'm one of your three co-hosts, Michael Brandvold. As always, I'm joined by Tommy Summers, Mark Cicchini. Woo-hoo. How you knuckleheads doing? We're, we're doing great. <laughs> when aren't we? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was I was just getting ready to tell you guys, you know, last week's show, which I think was amongst the three of us, the general consensus was, holy crap, what a piece of crap we delivered. Some people were like, that was the best show you guys have done. I loved it. I loved it. I it must be our, our 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 beautiful personalities because the content was pretty weak in our opinion. I mean, that can't be that. <laughs> well, it's not People your personality. It's not your personality, Tommy. That's for sure. Hey, I'm the witty one. <laughs> you two, I don't know what to say about. I was sitting here last week, going, "Can we please get it done? Can we?" I was my fucking groin was so sore from playing hockey. Oh, 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 groin injury. Look, a lot of people don't realize. <laughs> <laughs> the, the bottom of your stomach muscles it's a, it fucking hurts it's fucking it's that fucking thing and, and I yeah but it, it, let's let's okay let's get to the root of this whole thing all right in all fairness you didn't get that playing hockey we just discussed it this was a self-imposed wound <laughs> what five against one? <laughs> <laughs> oh man and that bench <laughs> <laughs> Got, no, b- no, before I, I actually i actually pulled it on the last shift of my game so like as soon as i got off the ice i mean i was just like fucking made for pain next day we're taping three sides and i'm like it was funny because when i got home or excuse me when i got up the next morning i told Liz, i'm like wow man it's not too bad she's like oh wait you know this this has happened before to me and sure as fuck by the end of the day after walking and shit to work, I was like, "Tommy, oh, Tommy, God. Mark is making making it sound like he really put him through through hell to sit there and record a show for an hour and a half. Because if he wasn't sitting with us, he would have been sitting in his recliner watching TV." Well, yeah, and every show is we're putting him through hell because he's hungry and wants to have dinner. <laughs> yeah, but he was eating Dove bars while he was I having know. a cold groin. So look, you guys are Mike's three hours behind. Come on. So, so, put a little food if, in that stomach before you at start. At eleven thirty in the morning, and by the time look, we went through this before. And it's seven o'clock at night. I want to eat fucking dinner. Or <laughs> Mike, by the time it ends, it's three o'clock. So Mark, Mark, fair? as we all know, Mark gets the crankies as the end of the show approaches. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm that fucking guy in the Snickers commercial, man. <laughs> The one, the one where, where uh, he's standing in the dress. Yes, that's me. <laughs> um, William, uh, Willem Dafoe. Be- before we before we move on here, I do actually have some housekeeping. I want to remind everybody. I haven't actually said this on the show, but we've said it on Facebook. Um, we are blowing out our three sides of the coin black shocker T-shirts. The shocker shirts, ten dollars each. We are uh, blowing out whatever inventory is remaining because we've got new shirts coming. We just approved a new design. It's going to be really cool. It, you know, guys, I was actually thinking it's like the first shirt for us, for me, that I've ever had a T-shirt with my face on it. It's kind of cool when you think no. about it. No, because you made the one with uh, Mark and the, the boobs and stuff. Oh, that's right. Well, but that this was a one-off. One. That was a one-off shirt. Yeah. That was a one-off shirt for me as a joke. This is a shirt that that people can actually buy. Yes, that's true. So that's kind of cool when you think about it. So anyway, head over it's... head over to shop three sides of the coin dot com. Pick up a ten dollar shocker T shirt. Let's move that inventory out. Help us defer the costs of uh, ordering the new shirts because believe me, 
when I say we don't make any money off of this stuff. We don't. Did you, didn't someone like flame you right away about that? Like, oh, gee, think much of yourself? Oh, I'm sure. When you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like literally, hey, 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 how's how's their podcast going? Uh, <laughs> because I saw that and I'm like, okay, guys, let's get this straight. So uh, the three of us or four of us with Lisa, we're trying to promote our podcast. Um, let's put ducks on it. Let's you know, let's or, or, I tell you, let's put a nature scene, or maybe you know, I don't know, the city of Chicago on it, and then put three sizes. Of, oh, that's right. It wouldn't me. It wouldn't fucking be promoting ourselves, then would it? I tell you what, why don't the guy who fucking can play, we'll put his picture on it, but put three sides of the coin. But he'll have to pay for it because we're promoting him now. I saw that. I'm like, hey, asshole, if we're promoting our fucking podcast. Oh, do you think our fucking faces should be on it? Really? That's being egotistical. I tell you what, how about if Kiss puts Aerosmith pictures on there? It says Kiss it. Because, you know, because otherwise they're egotistical. It just fucking, you know, shit like that is just so fucking stupid. Well, we could put a duck on there with a caption underneath that says, go fuck a duck. That would work. I, I, frankly, I think we should just put a picture of Lisa on the T-shirt. I, I don't even yeah. bother fucking replying to people like shit. Now, Mike, I know you love it. I'm just like, I don't have time to spend on people that are that fucking stupid. As Mark is in the middle of a rant here. <laughs> Yeah, right. he's fired up today. You know what? I he tell you what, fired I'm fired up. up. He I'm is fired up. Number one, because I'm making up for last week because I was a fucking total put in a punch bowl last week and I was sitting there. Gr- groin injury. Gr- gr- groin injury. Exactly. So not only that, listening to fucking Double Live Gonzo all day, which gets me totally pumped. And then I come home and God bless Mike Brun. Love you, Mike. Good buddy of mine. You know, I got a whole bunch of new stuff from the 70s bunch of clips that i didn't have i look an ad i didn't have i have the ad but i didn't have one for this city nice cool did you ever work your way through that pile of shit i sent you yeah well yeah i did it's fantastic but that's because i don't even know what's in there that's what gets back to what um and there goes the kiss router again uh themed one originally I wanted to do the creatures one, but I, I want to have enough stuff all in a row because I'm always getting new stuff and I've got some great creature stuff that we could talk about. But okay, again, you know, uh, I, I, I love the fact that our listeners have to actually be intelligent because when Mark goes on these rants, you you, ha- you lose about every 10 seconds of his conversation. So you got to be smart enough to fill in the blanks. It's like the missing DNA. <laughs> what was he talking right, about when, when he froze? Did it stop? Yes. You gotta, dude, I was in mid soliloquy. That's that can't happen. Well, I don't watch the fucking show, so I don't know if you, I, <laughs> you know what are we gonna do about it? It's your internet router. I just wish Gene and Paul would come up with one because then I'd buy one. <laughs> Other than that, but you wouldn't open it. So what does it matter? I'll buy two. Okay. Somebody, j- somebody, literally, somebody, just buy two routers and put a kiss sticker on it. <laughs> Look, guys, I'm in a great mood. Okay. Well, got, let's keep I rolling. Then. Of, I got even part of my kiss fucking mess cleaned up over the weekend. Actually, you I know, got, Mark I is got, in a great mood because he's double promoting us today. He's wearing a hat and a t-shirt. I am. I am. It doesn't. Well, you know what, Mike? To be honest, it's in the rotation. You know, <laughs> it's never come up together like this ever before. Yeah, never. Well, never. what kind of rot- never clean at the same time? What kind of rotation do you have if it's never happened before? <laughs> I, I literally have a bat. Liz brings up, and I have like all my black concert T-shirts and stuff. So as I go through them, I just take the top one off the top, and whatever. Because I just got home from work. You know, I'm all stinky and smelling shit, and I. Hurry up, clean up, um, and then I just go to the top of the basket. Whoop, three sides, matches the head. Woo-hoo! So we won't Place see it. this shirt for another two years now. It's a good possibility. I hate this thing. God. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's 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 read some comments. I've got one I okay. want to share, but why don't you go, Tommy? 
Well, first off, I want to say thank you to everybody that jumps in and participates in the show with all the um, comments, but also people who do that extra step, uh, like CJ Marciano on YouTube sent a link with Google Maps as to where the Thunder Chicken is, which is now like a automobile restoration place. So shout out to, to CJ and all of you folks that do that. And the question I would like to read is, well, actually the comment is John Wheatcroft. If the elder had been a hit in sales, if nothing else, would they have stayed doing that sort of music to carry on a creative vein, or would it have been right back to it, straight ahead to like heavy metal? If it succeeded, so they you, would have done it. They would have stayed with it. So there would have been Elder Part Two or something like that. If the album sales succeeded, there would have been the movie. There would have been the tour. The costumes would have maybe evolved but they would have still stayed that new romantic look. It would have been regular boots. There would have been an elder part two. Yeah, they would have they would have milked it until the money ran out. I'll tell you, Michael, I, I, this is something I, I, I told you guys before. I, I was lucky enough to have lunch with Gene and one because I'm a drummer and I asked him questions about um, the creatures and I drum sound. And I said it was so powerful and how much I loved the record. And, you know, it was funny because we did talk about this period of kiss coming off of the the elder. And this was back in 09. And I remember point blank, I said, you know, how come on, on Lick It Up? I said, that drum sound would have sounded great, like on Exciter and stuff. And he point blank looked at me and said, we didn't keep that drum sound because the album didn't sell. So why would we want to replicate a sound that didn't sell? Exactly. Right from his mouth to my ears. And I'm, I kind of, what kind of caught me like off guard. And I'm like, I, I don't think about that. I'm like, just because the record didn't catch on right away, it still sounded good. I love the way Creatures sounds. And, uh, you know, it just honestly, honestly, too, I mean, if, if, if that drum sound would have been on Exciter, I think it would have made a song like that pop even more, you know. It, uh, yeah. But anyways, that was that's exactly what he said. He said the record didn't sell. So why would we replicate that sound? Fair enough. His band. <laughs> But that's but I mean that really goes to answer the the comment too, because if it would have sold huge, you would have you would have heard that drum sound again and again and as long as it kept selling again and again and again. Um, can I read one more? Sure. Austin sure. Campbell. Austin Campbell. Tommy says skip the show and save two hours of your life. I still say that a piss poor episode of Three Sides is better than most podcasts. A game. Thank you, Austin. Well, you know, <laughs> Mark gets no credit for last week. That's for sure. Yeah, Mister Gro Gro Groin injury. <laughs> you know, it's like AJ on on, uh, on Good Times. You know, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Michael, look at the new. Look, look, you know, yeah, you know. Up. It's time time to change things up again. Um, I want to read a, a comment that was sent to me by uh, Sean Morris. Um, his comment goes, Mike, did you ever think your little podcast that that could would be eminently approaching 30,000 likes in Facebook? Answering that question, no. Never thought in a million years we'd have that many. Um, I think it's stellar. Even your last episode proves that in your worst day, just being honest and upfront will carry you through. You guys did a great job saving that episode. Mark really adds the ketchup to the meatloaf, so to speak, with his sheer passion and vast, complete knowledge on all things KISS. For my part, Three Sides is the only thing that I can play late at night to make me relaxed and happy so I can go to sleep. That's scary when you think about it. <laughs> I, couldn't li I, I, I couldn't listen to us. Uh -uh. Um, you guys don't even know how much your podcast really means to us fans. Lisa is so perfect as well. Bravo to all of you and have an awesome day. Thanks, Sean. Thank, it's just thank you, it's, Sean. It, hearing, thing, nice. hearing things thank like you. that, you know, definitely keeps us going, you know, makes us realize that, yeah, you know, a show that we think sucks, you guys love it and you guys had a great time with it. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Very true. Thank you. We really do appreciate the support. Oh, and th thanks to you guys. We're having absolutely phenomenal numbers and shows, which is, again, where that works for a positive for all the listeners is that the more attention that we attract to what we're doing, 
the more guests reach out, the easier it is for us to find guests who are willing to come on because they actually have heard of us and they don't feel uncomfortable in doing so. So you guys are all an integral part of making this thing work. Um, so being Mr. Numbers guy that I am, I thought I would share with you and, and everybody, because these numbers are out there, if anybody wants to go look them up and add them. But our, la not not last week's show, what, two weeks, three weeks ago when we did our review of the I video that turned into our our elder special, basically, um, we've, we're just over 40,000 total plays on that whole episode of just us talking about a video we didn't even didn't even share the video show the video um and i think the video itself is at about forty-five thousand plays so that's 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 pretty cool when you think about it that you know nearly as many people are listening to us talk about it as people actually watched it which also goes back to what I said last week. It, it, it is amazing. The elder, for us Kiss Geeks, we can never seem to get enough of the conversation. I mean, the elder is just that. It's the crazy uncle in Kiss. <laughs> it's like, it's the train wreck you can't stop, you know, looking at through your fingers. It Just amazing, amazing stuff. And I think some of it, too, is at least from my perspective, that was about when the faucet was turned off and all of a sudden you weren't getting news about the band as much as you had been up until that point. So there's a lot of things that it's all of speculation um, at that period. And, uh, and speaking of that, another thing I wanted to bring up because I saw an exchange with Mark and somebody else the other day regarding killers and I could be wrong in my timeline, but I could have sworn that Killers came out after Creatures, but I had it before the tickets went on sale for the February 83 show in Minneapolis, Bloomington. And so I was wondering, when exactly did that record come out? Well, it depends on when it came out. Do you mean in the U.S. as an import? Or? No, just as an as because I picked it up at down in the valley at the time because they would carry imports like that. I was just wondering when because I think that came out pretty damn close to when Creatures actually came out. I I I, I got to I I'm I'm sort of with Tommy on this. I would love to know the exact timeline because I've told this story a number of times. May of eighty two. May of 82. Okay. My my memory is walking in to buy creatures, to buy killers at Great American Music and seeing Creatures of the Night up on the new release wall. Right. It, really? You? Well, be I, I, I because I was, I was, you know, back then, you know, no internet. I had pen pals. I had a pen pal, Adrian, over in Europe, and then I had a, a, another pen pal here in the U.S. who lived in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I remember the, the pen pal in Utah was sending me clippings from, like, Kerrang! and various magazines that he was getting, and it was all about killers. There was nothing... Nothing was being talked about Creatures of the Night. It was, Mike, there's, this album Killers is coming out. It's coming out. It's coming out. And and I'm pretty sure that I saw a release date, and I went to Great America. I had no idea it was not going to be out in the U.S. Yeah. Um, so I think I saw a release date, I'm sure, in one of these ads, and I walked into Great American Music the day of to buy it, and it wasn't there, but I distinctly remember the, the big new release wall that Great American Music would have on the back wall over by the ticket mm -hmm. area. Yep. There was Creatures of the Night because I went up there scanning for Killers because I knew that cover and I was like, what the hell is that? That's Creatures. Of, there's a Kiss album that just came out. So they had to be close, I would have thought. Yeah, I could have sworn I had it before Creatures came out. Well, just it because came, huh? May of it, it came out in May of 82. So you certainly had months and months and months to get it import. I know for a fact I didn't get it. Or creatures. Okay. Because I, 
I remember I, I was I remember I was at the mall with I remember this distinctly. I was at Macomb Mall. I was at the mall with my mom. She went and did her thing. I went to the book section and whatever, and I'm reading some rock book and they had the the uh, I don't know the chronology or whatever kiss and I just looked I was just happy because it was I can't remember it was like sounds or something like there was again it, this is a cool place that had like import rock stuff and I'm like killers and I remember Michael because like you I had pen pals I, I remember hearing that kiss was releasing a greatest hits album and they, I'm like, I don't need, you know, at the time, I'm like, I don't need that. And I'm like, killers. And then it, they went on to describe four new songs. I literally ran and found my mom. I didn't, you know, I was 16 at the time, 17. And I'm like, look, I'll pay when we get home. <laughs> I'm going to go over to Harmony House um, and I'm going to order this because there's new Kiss songs and I didn't know about it. So this would have been my only time. The timeline I know about this would be after February because I remember distinctly, I didn't have it before the concert. I saw him, I saw the creatures in February of 83. It was, what this, I was still in school, though, so I know it was before May. So I probably got it sometime between March and May of 83. And I remember just loving those four songs. I just, right. you know, like, this well, is and, like, I, go ahead. Well, and since he brought that up, that's what got me thinking, because I remember... Michael's story because we've covered that a couple times talking about the creatures timeline and I can remember distinctly being in line at the Met Center to get kiss tickets for the creatures show and that was probably in November of that year creatures had just come out I remember standing in line um, talking to people and saying okay well first off Ace Fraley's not going to be with them and secondly I was talking about their creatures or the the killers record which i had had for a couple of months so i want to think i probably got it in august or september of that year because in minneapolis we had a great record store that always carried all those imports and it was one of those things where i just stumbled across it by accident one day it wasn't that i was aware that it was coming out you know you just go into a record store and you look through everything and that's how i ended up with it because i thought okay well cool at least what i'm hearing on killers is going to be more of a direction that creatures might be but then creatures came out and it was just so i almost think that the, the what's important to me about the killers is is that those four songs is a bridge gap from the elder to creatures there's a shift in there oh yeah uh, you know and that's why it, it has its place but in all fairness you know we don't always remember everything and people love to bust our balls about that but um yeah, I, 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 I wish like I still had receipts or something because, yeah, I'd love to put together the exact timeline well, of guys, when I guys. bought, when I like what was when did I buy Creatures of the Night? And, and, and I can only assume, listen, it it probably wasn't the day of release because that new release wall is up there all the time. And an album like Kiss might be up there for a couple weeks. It's not going to be up there for three months, but it might be up there right. for a couple weeks right around its new release. So it's somehow they were that close, that Killers. And, and, and I don't know if I was seeing Killers ads from, remember, it was released in different countries too. Right. So I might have saw an ad for a country that had a different release date than the UK or something like that. I don't know. I just don't remember. I just know I was seeing ads for Killers. I saw a release date that drove that that made me go to Great American Music on that day. And on that day, Creatures was on the wall for a new release. Well, I I can tell you without hesitation. I I. From Love Gun on, I, I, I bought every single U.S. Kiss release to this day on the day of release. Every since Love Gun on, never missed a release. Of course you have. Well, it's true. Um, and that was the whole thing with Killers. It hit me from the left field. I'm like, what the what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? And then when I found out I had new, I literally, I was just like, I. There's new music, and I don't have. I mean, I literally dropped that fucking, and I ran to find my mother, because I'm like, I have to order this now because, you know, at that time too, I was really getting into being a a, a vinyl junkie at that age, 
because I knew the import section at Harmony House and they would order records. I'd already ordered, I think, the second Quiet Riot album because that was uh, maybe a year or two earlier. It was right when Ozzy was hitting big. Um, and I was really into Randy Rhodes at the time. And I remember, I think that was the first record I ever ordered. And then they give you these brochures, and I'm like, and I remember having to order, I think I ordered a Gillen record, um, you know, because, you know, obviously at that time, it was solo from Purple, and, and it was, you know, it was, again, I used to just order a lot of import records, and they'd have these cool sheets, and I didn't chat, you know, like I said, I wasn't even thinking about my favorite band, that's how come that, you know, Killers just hit me out from left field. And to this day, Partners in Crime is one of my favorite Kiss songs. I, that's one that doesn't get a ton of love. But I, By the way, there's a great remix of that. And it's a total remix. Did that come out? 92, the remix? You guys remember? I think it was on a... I think it was on a... I'm going to go get it. Right oh, was it on one on of those, a, like, gold CDs? No, no, no. The remix, I, th- I want to see is on a Revenge single. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. Revenge. Yeah, I don't have a clue. Don't no, you know, as, as we're talking here, I'm thinking more and more. I know that between when the Creatures album came out and the Creatures show, somewhere in between there, I did finally get Killers. I don't remember how or where I acquired it, but I do remember being at the Creatures show and when Paul was doing his um, stage rap for Love Gun, part of it I distinctly remember him saying, and she got down on her knees. And I, I immediately was but, like, yeah, like, oh, yeah. yes, you're going to play down on your knees. So I knew the songs. Of course, right. I was greatly disappointed that it was just Love Gun. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. And, and I, like I said, I, I remember all that stuff, too. But, you know, like Mark, I had him almost every single one of them on the day of release. I was aware of Love Gun. I didn't buy that on day of release because I was earning money to buy it. But from that point forward, man, I didn't miss one through Lick It Up. And then that's about you know, like a... I, I, you know, and I, all my singles are put away in a different... But I did find something since we're talking about The Elder. At the early KISS conventions... This was really, really sought after. It's the original oh. Japanese. Mm-hmm. If you look at the, this is the original track listing. It doesn't start with the oath. I mean, I know we mentioned it, but this was the first time you could ever hear it in this order. Was the original Japanese? That was exciting. It was. It was huge. It was huge. You guys can see that. Yeah, I, I meant to grab this last week or when we were talking about it. But the original order was uh, Fanfare. And I, if I remember correctly, too, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, fanfare, Just a Boy, Odyssey, Only You, Under the Rose, Dark Light, A World Without Heroes, The Oath, and Mr. Blackwell. And what did you notice from that, people? No escape. Escape from Not the right. island. Yes. But it, it ended up on Chikara or something else, didn't it? Yeah, something like that. And I did was it the B side to was it a B side as well? Um to World Without I'm guessing that, you know, again, that, that's something that Tom would, would know. I I'm not super geeky into all the you know, what B side went where all the time. But uh I just remember when I picked this up, people this would have been God ninety two Kiss Expo in at Rothman Center maybe ninety one. I know I, I remember getting this this in New Jersey. I remember going out to get it because of, you know, what it was. And I remember I think I got like the only one there. And I remember people offering me like two hundred dollars for that back in the day because it was just really no other one. And the import thing you know, it wasn't like you can just go on, click on Amazon. Oh, yeah, I, I, I was going to mention as you were talking about how you would go order an import. Because I, I think I did that once or twice at Harpo's Records. But ordering imports was like you'd go order it and you might, it could take anywhere from a week to three months for that import to arrive. Because there was just no, I mean, it it wasn't there was no overnight shipping it was usually thrown on a boat shipped over 
So, you know, that was one of the reasons I just hated ordering imports to begin with. It's like, oh, I'm all excited about this. But now I may not get the freaking album for eight weeks. It was a different time, man. That's for sure. But it was so exciting, though, too. I remember, too, um, I remember ordering uh, Live at Last from Black Sabbath. Because at the time, there was no live Ozzy record. Um, and that act, that album, too, I'm trying to think. I, I think it's the songs off of Killing Yourself to Live, I think, has totally different lyrics. And, and again, you know, this was the back. I got to you know really put myself back into like 81, 82, 83. Music was now my, you know, was everything to me record stores and just finding stuff and then having all the black Sabbath records and then seeing a live record with Ozzy, you're going, Holy shit. I didn't even know this exists. Same with kiss kiss killers, four new songs. What the fuck, you know? And then you're like, Oh my God, you know, Randy Rhodes played in another band before. (laughs) It's like that, that time was magical for me. Just absolutely. You, 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 you would be discovering things all the time, whether you picked up a, a, an issue of Kerrang! and were reading through it, or you were just flipping through the import section at a record store, or you read something on a wall. I mean, that, you just were gathering pieces of info from all these different sources. And like you said, yeah, you would just all of a sudden stumble across and go, this band had an album out? Who knew? Uh, and the other thing that sucked about imports is, depending on where you... the, the record store it could cost you an arm and a leg to buy that import too some of these some of these record stores you know that import would be like forty dollars and we're talking like back in the 80s they they'd charge you a fortune for imports if if they could i gotta be be, harmony house here in michigan i want to say i pay between 18 and 25 for an import which at the time was a lot of money because because rec- brand new albums were what seven bucks eight bucks yeah I remember that because at the time what was minimum wage like four ninety nine or some crazy no show? no I was gonna say like no like three bucks yeah yeah, yeah. and that I was I was working for you know I was working at a golf place I was whatever making minimum wage but I'd literally take my entire fucking paycheck to the record store every week <laughs> and I was the same way I worked at Southtown Bowl. And every two weeks, I'd get my paycheck, and I'd go deposit it. I'd take that money, and I'd walk down to Musicland, and I'd buy a couple vinyl albums and a couple blank cassette tapes every two weeks. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. That just brings back such fucking great memories, man. And uh, uh, it's Liz, so I have to take this back inside. Of course, she's got to take it. Couldn't tell her no. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. All right. Well, it's always fun to go down memory lane. But I think, you know, I know I saw a number. These were some questions, some comments that were on our video and even on the iVideo itself about fans who really don't understand I don't know if, if understanding bootlegs is the right term, but understanding the rights of recordings. That's probably more it. That 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 there there were fans out there that didn't quite understand what it what what the rights of a recording were. And I I, I don't know. I mean I think what it comes down to is well here, let me use this as an example. I mean we, we all go out that that elder cd you just had there mark you bought the cd Mm -hmm. you don't own the music on the cd you own the physical case and you own the physical disc and you own the rights to play it for your personal use because i think even if 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 you dig into like the fine 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 print um the record labels don't give you the rights to do public performances and distribution all that at the end of the day uh, a bootlegger, a person who collects tapes, who acquires tapes and buys tapes, doesn't own the recording of what they're acquiring. You own 
the tape, if that makes sense. You own the case, and you own the right to listen to what's on it, but you have zero rights to the actual recording that's on there, whether it's video or audio. There's nothing you, you, you can't do anything with that legally. What, what I found most surprising about the people chiming in about the iVideo T- telling, uh, you know, that there's there's a guy who, who made a copy of the I video from uh, that was that was posted and he put his name on it and stuff. And some people got really crazy about it. And I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I don't recall these people getting upset seeing the Kobo 76 one, which is on Kissology. I bet you if you if you really wanted to look, there's probably 20 or 30 different people who put that up. Uh-huh. And, and it got me to thinking about something because you guys know I'm a crazy geek collector. I just went to my own personal collection. Any of you ever heard the Kiss? It's on, it's, matter of fact, it's on YouTube, the audio. Kiss the, Tulsa 1975. Uh, Ladies and gents, this is the master tape. This is where they all came from. And many, many years ago, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars buying master tapes. If you look at this, (laughs) Hot Sam even put his, the sound, Hot Sam was the sound man for kids. Put his name on it. And, and, and here's one of the cool things that you may not know about this show. Now, I own the master cassette. On the end of side two, because all the whole reason that Hot Sam would, would record these is because he wanted to check his mixes, how things sounded. And he could run the tape through the board. At the end of the Kiss Tulsa show on the master tape is half of Hundred thousand years, and half of Black Diamond from a show. I don't know where it came from because it's not labeled on the tape. Well, you can assume it's a show prior to Tulsa. It has to be because it's the whole Tulsa show, and then when the Tulsa show ends, I get the end of another show. That's nowhere in the bootleg market. So. Number one, as someone who who spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on something that I didn't own, you you if you have a, a bootleg video or a bootleg anything, you don't own it. That's what I'm trying to get at. But you one thing I do have what I did spend my money with, or I, how I spent my money, is nobody in the world has a better copy than me. No one. The one on YouTube sounds great. I've seen that show. I think Godfather and some of these other bootleggers have put it out. Their show's never going to sound as good as mine. But I don't write to Godfather, and I don't go on to YouTube going, that's my show. I paid for it. You know, I deserve mention. It's No, no, that's not how this shit works. And as somebody who was really into the bootlegs for years, I was a filmer for a year. I filmed so I could get other first gens. And it didn't matter if it was Kiss or what other. other. Matter of fact, that's how I got to know Tommy. Tommy was my cheap trick connection. Mm-hmm. If Tommy filmed something and I filmed something, he got a first gen, I got a first gen. That's Whereas how if, this Yeah, and so like if, let's say, and I'm not saying Mark does did or didn't do this, but let's just use any filmer. So if you, <clears throat> if you film something and you have the master, I'm going to give you a first gen right off the master, okay? There's a lot of other people that if you can't trade them for another master that they don't have of equal quality, they will usually gen it down two to three times, meaning they'll tape it on a videotape, then tape a copy of that, tape a copy of that, and then put it out to try to preserve the quality. So by being a filmer, you're able to get to other people who are filmers to get literally the best possible copy you can get. Um, And so the thing that I found so funny about the guy who did the video is he took the iVideo, 
he put the elder door on each side of it. It was actually really quite creative. Then he took the elder logo and put it over the time code. And then what he did is he just ran it through a professional video editing software, and he just messed with the brightness and the dark, the brightness and the contrast a little bit, and almost completely wiped away that um, watermark that was on the video. So it actually looks better. When you watch it, the only thing he didn't do, which he should have done, is taken the audio off of the CD to sync the two up, and you'd really had something there. And people just went absolutely nuts. And I just, I was reading these comments thinking, God, does not anybody get what this is all about? No one owns this. So if, if whomever purchased. I need to stop you right there. You guys remember what a macro buster was? I had two of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Macro- Macro busters for you youngins. Youngins. Not only Hollywood, but then bootleggers were doing what Tommy just said. But what it was, it was an electronic way to make a, a, a video cassette that you couldn't copy. It would scramble if you tried to copy it. So p- people like Tommy and myself, we went out and spent 20 bucks. And we bought macro busters. They were these little tiny boxes about this big. And you plugged your video stuff through them. And guess what? Off went, off went the watermarks. Off went the, off. Guys, it's the bootleg world, okay? Nobody gets credit for anything. It's all it's illegal. A, it's exactly. So <laughs> when I when I was reading comments going, you know, you're a scumbag. You shouldn't really, really. Don't you understand what you're dealing with? You, no one owns that. Yeah, and the reason that that. <laughs> Look, I don't own this fucking recording. You you own the oh, Mark, Mark. You own the cassette tape and the case. That's it. That's it. That's yeah. it. Oh, do I have the best copy around? Yeah, I do. Guys, how about those Kiss demos from '75? Right from what was it Magna Glavic or whatever Magna, whatever. Guys, this is the original tape that has. You know, uh, mistake is on this, and um, oh, it's not the smoke that 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 burns you. Here, all, here's all those... here's the point. Mark has that tape and the recordings that are on there, but Mark has no legal rights to call up anybody who's selling these songs and say you can't do it because I bought it, because Mark doesn't have the legal rights to it either. That and, and I think that's the whole issue is. You can you can go well. Why isn't the podcast going after these people and shutting? Because they can't. They have no legal rights to the video recording. That that's all it comes down to. You do not own the music that's on this CD. You own the plastic. Mike, is that victory? It's a victory. It's a new live victory CD. That's not with Charlie Hune though. Uh, I only no. collect the Charlie Hune ones. No. I love um, Victory. I love Victory. By the too. way, great German band. Great German band. Yep. Love them. Yep. So, so the, I mean, that, that, that's the whole. That's the whole point. People is, you know, you can't you can't get upset. There's nothing you can do about this. You know, bootlegs. <laughs> I, I I made a comment to Mark. I'm like, and people wonder why hoarders don't release anything. It's because of all this drama that comes up when something does get released and then somebody wants to claim ownership to it. You can't claim ownership to a recording that you do not own. Mike, I I want to go a step further with with exactly that. Now, Julian bought that tape originally from Kurt. I don't know when Kurt got it, but let's just say Kurt got it in 2000. That gives him a big window, okay? That tape was made in 1981, the fall of 1981. So you're telling me that it could never have been copied from fall of 81 to the beginning of the 2000s? You don't know what happened. Again, when I bought these things many, 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 many years ago for way more money than those guys spent, and I have the documentation to prove it, how many times did the tape from 1975 get copied until I bought it decades later? I had no control over that. Only thing I have control of is I bought master copies, 
Which leads me back to this. When Kiss played on Fridays, they rehearsed those three songs three times. Ace's solos are all different. And quite frankly, the guy running the board took Ace right out of the mix in, 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 in on the first take because he was playing so horribly. Here's the proof. I have a stereo soundboard. So far, I don't know anyone else that has it. I spent a lot of money on this. And this, this tape here is documented in Kurt and Jeff's book. The, the gentleman who I bought it off of has unfortunately passed away. But you can read the story of, of that tape in that book. I bought it directly off of him. He swore there's no other copies. I don't know if there is. I just don't know. But between... Um, January of 82, and when I bought that thing, whatever, 10 years ago, I don't know how many copies were run. I don't know if he, he swore he never did, but I don't know. And he's dead now. I can't ask but, him. You, but, but, but Mark, even if, even if you knew for a fact that you have the only copy, you still I can't see, release that, it. That's where I was going, <laughs> Michael. And guess what? I can't do nothing. Oh, I could. You could. I could, you could. I could, I could put it on YouTube. I get. But I don't own it. You can't sell it. You can't do anything. You can invite friends over. You can play it for people sitting at a Kiss Expo. You can do whatever you want. But yeah, I but the for- more you like try and monetize it, the greater chance you're gonna get in trouble with the people who own the rights to the songs and the recording that you have in your possession. Correct. Exactly. All I own, all I own, is the case and the and the tape that it's on, and the stories, the, and the great so, stories, and the stories. Well, and then the other part of it too that I don't want to gloss over is, is that it was different back then. Now, like we talked about, you just push download, and you could probably torrent anything that's out there. But back in the day, you had to hustle. You had to find people that had these different things that you wanted, and you had to find honest people, and that was very, very hard to do. So oh, that was smoochie, one of the smoochie. great things. Yeah. <laughs> no, come here. My baby's home! Oh. Behave yourself, Tommy. What did I do? I was in Hold the middle on. of a... Hold on. You're taking dinner stuff. Hold on. Mark's putting in his dinner order for those who are I would like listening. Uh, extra large meatloaf. And no a ketchup. side of ketchup. Sure. Ketchup on the top and a side of ketchup. And American fries. With ketchup. <laughs> My baby son. Yeah, it. it's awesome. So, no, what I was saying is, is that's one of the things I appreciated about Mark from the very start. Because I've known Mark as long as I've known Michael, 25, 30 years. Mark was always honest. He was always a straight shooter. And every time he said he would do something, he did it and vice versa. So we Except always got when along. he said he'd send us our doormats. No, look, look, uh, when I'm doing when I'm doing business, baby, I'm laser. But yeah. I'm like, you, you need a copy of that? I'll get when I get down to when I get down to the basement, I'll do it. But uh, no, business is business, man. I've always <laughs> trades go out it's true right away. So the point is, is not everyone necessarily acted that way. And so when we're talking about genning stuff down, uh, there are people, you know, back in the day, videotape machines had SP, LP, and EP, two hour, four hour, and six hour on a two hour tape. So sometimes they would purposely tape a master on a six hour version just to gen it down three or four gens and send that to you. So it was very hard to find the right people. So back to Mark's point, that's the value for him is he's purchased something that no one has a better copy. And to him, that has a lot of value, even though you can still find a lot of this stuff anywhere you look. But it was just different back then. And same with the when they came out with Super VHS. The only difference between a, a Max L Gold VHS tape and the Super VHS tapes was there was a hole at the on the bottom of the cassette. So we just figured out how to, a way to drill the hole in the right spot so it would go up and through the spring. And you could use a Max L Gold, which was, which was actually a better quality tape than a standard um, VHS or a super VHS tape at half the price. So, I mean, we could sit and talk about this type of stuff all day long, but it just took me back to those days where it hasn't changed. People were bitching about it then. It's like, well, if you're going to put it out there, the minute you put something out, it is no longer yours. Right. And I want to go back to what Tommy said, because we had this in a private conversation. 
as somebody as 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 guys who were truly bootleggers who snuck our cameras in, who literally risked getting beaten up and you know thrown out, and it's not like today you guys sit as a young fan, oh, you just bring your phone, you record the whole damn thing, no one cares. Let me tell you, man, it wasn't like that years ago at all. So, anyways, so now when people they're like, oh my list, whatever, I'm like, dude, these fucking people, like like Tommy said. Hit torrent site, record. All of a sudden, anything that's on a torrent site, you have. You don't know anything about the fucking quality. You had, you had, like Tommy said, you had to find people, and, and a shady business, mind you, who were trustworthy. And I, that, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll even bring this up. My friend Mike, um, was going to put these up on on. Uh, on eBay, he's like, you know, I know you collect that kind of stuff. What are you going to give me for them? It just saves me the hassle, and then I know you get something you like, and I, and 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 you'll pay me for it. I'm so blessed that I've kept my name clean for not only in, in doing this, but business, everything, you know. Well, and that's good. Where, re- yeah, go ahead, Tommy. Well, but, I was just but, saying that's where the pen pal thing comes in handy because of pen pals and relationships with people overseas. Um, I was able to find people who lived in Japan or lived in Germany and would tape every single rock palast. So if there was a rock palast that I wanted, like the cheap trick from 83. Tell everybody what rock palast was. Oh, rock know, palast. But, yeah, it was, a live, it was a live concert on German television that aired weekly and sometimes even bi-weekly. I don't even know. But they have every band practically that I've ever heard of on there and, and some pretty epic stuff like the time that Jefferson Starship went there and, and Grace Slick was – apparently just hammered and was starting to like cuss out the German people that, you know, we won the war and all that sort of thing. It was totally out of control. But the point is, is that when cheap trick or someone was on that you really, really liked, I knew how to go and get a very, uh, like a first generation master copy from that particular person who literally pushed the record button. But then let's talk about the other problem. That was in in PAL, not NTSC. So then you had to find someone in the States who could convert it from PAL format to, yeah, to, to VHS or to NTSC, I should say. And so, I mean, there was just... It, I'm not glamorizing it. It was a lot of work to get these things, but it just... Now, when you hear people talk about, I have this big collection, it, to me, it's just a big joke because everything's on these torrent sites. You can download that stuff anywhere now. And it's funny how I was just on you, uh, YouTube the other day because I was doing some paperwork. I thought, you know, I want to watch a Kiss show, but I want to watch something I haven't seen before. And I couldn't tell you how many pro shots are up there that I wasn't even aware of that I can watch, whether it be Japan 2005 or whatever it might be, Rock and Ring. It, it, that's the cool thing about YouTube. But the minute that it became public consumption, it's no longer a bootleg really anymore. You I mean, know, it is. It's not the same. The, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with having a collection of audio. No, no, no. I'm not. It's, I'm, it's, Mark's it's, not saying it's, that. I'm not yeah, saying no, that. It's, it's stop with the bragging that you've got the biggest collection of audio unless you can sit here like Mark and say, here's what's in my collection. I actually own the master, the first gen. I actually own stuff that is not available on torrents, that is not available on YouTube. Otherwise, great. You've got a great collection. Listen, I've got every version of the Instant Lives Kiss hat. That's not breaking rights. It's just it's cool. I can go listen to any mm-hmm. show I want at any point in time. You just got to you, – you can't if, – if you don't understand or haven't been part of the bootleg world, you can't get all up in arms about what happens with these tapes. You can't get, up, you can't get upset when somebody owns something and refuses to release it. Uh, unless you want to give them a few thousand dollars to pay them so you can do whatever you want with it. You can't get upset that all kinds of other people are now making copies of copies of copies of copies. You, there's nothing you can do about it. Just enjoy the fact, be <clears throat> thankful that somebody said, you know what, I'm willing to put this I video out for free. I'm just going to yeah. put it out there. It was my expense. I did it. Yeah, Here you go. Watch it. That, Thank that you. It. That was fantastic. Thank you. Because yes. you know what? They knew as soon as it goes out there, everybody's going to have it. Fans are going to – I mean, listen. 
I I made a I saved a copy of it right away off of YouTube just in case something happened to it. That's what's going to happen. Don't get up in arms over it. If you're a fan, don't sit here and think I'm going to protect the original purchase purchaser or whoever released it. There's nothing you can do about it because again, at the end of the day, all that matters is the legal rights to that recording belong to some company in New York City somewhere. And it's all up to them what they want to do with it. You can't, you can't protect it. You can't do lawsuits. You can't do anything well, with it. I want to speak to that though too, because some people were upset that the guy put his name, you know, on it. Whoever the and I'm just going to say it's uh, whatever Joe Jack. I don't remember the guy's name. But anyway, he put his name on. It and they're like, at least if that's not your work, take it down. I'm like, Christ Almighty! I've seen copies of shows I've filmed and someone put. I remember, I don't want to get into the name game, but a certain guy yeah. who used to put his fucking little crawl across bottoms of shows because he was advertising to contact him to buy other stuff. There was a couple in Chicago who liked to film themselves having sex, and what they would do is in the middle of like our Where Aerosmith go, concert. Tommy? I'm telling you. <laughs> so like in the middle of an Aerosmith concert that you could buy for them, they put a nice little like screener in the middle of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, a hillside. So it's like, man, it takes all kinds of people to make the world go round. And I also want to make another clarification, which I think is very important because people make the mistake. There is a big difference between a bootleg and a pirate. Okay, a pirate is something that is produced or reproduced from an original source that is commercially released. So if Lick It Up is out and you make a copy of Lick It Up on CD or cassette or vinyl or whatever, and you sell it, that is a pirate. A bootleg is something that is a live recording that is not put out as an official release by the band, the label, or anything like that. So really, the bootlegs really took prevalence because the um, record labels were too stupid to monetize their value. If, if they had put out a live show for every single tour of all of the bands under their umbrella, bootlegs would be half of what they are today. I mean, there's some fans like Mark who, you know, he'd want every single show on the 1996 reunion tour. But not everybody's like that. Some people just want one choice one. For me, I always was looking for one pro shot from every single tour of the bands that I love just for myself. But the point is, is that there's a big difference. So a lot of people say that, well, you're, you're pirating. It's like, no, completely two different things. Also, I, want, I brought up the stuff from Kissology, those were original bootlegs. I mean, those are the ones you went to the to the Kiss Expos to to find. So they were they were in the bootleg world before they were official. Boy, I look like uh, what the hell's uh, Chris Farley? Uh, <laughs> but they were in but they were in the bootleg world long before they were official, long before the Kissologies. So, and even now. There's people who still post the Houston 77, the Largo 79, the, you know, the Fridays. Speaking of, we're always talking about the Elder and the Friday stuff. How many different people put up the El those three songs from Fridays on YouTube? It must be dozens and dozens and dozens. Constant. None, of those people, none of those people were trying to screw anybody, which just gets, gets back to the point where when I was reading were people getting all upset about some guy making another version of the i video with his stuff on it? Who the fuck cares? What's the difference? There's no difference. It's Universal's video anyway. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's Universal. Any moment, if anybody can get pissed, Universal will get pissed that oh, this guy made another copy of the video that we freaking owned and we paid for. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, someone's comment like, "Well, you should at least give credit to." Give credit to who? Do, do you give it to Julian? Do you give it to Kurt? Do you get look, man, this stuff just came out. Like I said, I've got lots of kiss shows. My uh my Blaze Fest has been copied eight billion fucking times. It was one of my biggest sellers and one of my most popular tapes because people knew I taped it. You know, keep in mind that was what, ninety-two or ninety no, that was ninety-four. Ninety-four. Um I, yeah. If you weren't a hardcore KISS fan, you didn't care. I mean, look, man, once that wire tripped in 96, the bootleg thing took, man, it's like a whole new world opened. 
you know, from from the reunion tour on, my video business went fucking insane. So much so, I shouldn't be telling you this, but fuck it, it's years ago, it's beyond me. I'd call Liz for my P.O. box. I had fucking stacks of tape, man. And I was, it was insane. It's like people couldn't get enough. But in 94, when I had the Blaze Fest, and keep in mind, too, this is before the internet. This is, before, you know, people knew that I taped it. I was hearing from people I didn't even know. They'd find out my number from somebody else. Like, and keep in mind, a few other people taped it, too. But that this show was by uh, far the once, best. It was great. But one of the things. Eric, that was the first time he ever sang Black Diamond. So yep. it was like, you know, mm-hmm. it was cool kiss wise. Also, too, that was like the first show they really brought back. Or not so much the first show, but they were doing like Got to Choose. Got to they Choose. Were, you know, yeah. yeah. And you know Mark's I mean? was kind of like what you're looking at here, and some of the other versions were like. Yes. <laughs> so, so, you know what I mean? I mean, I, the people who, who were collecting those things and who were passionate about them. I knew the minute that I that I sold one, it was done. I mean, it was out there. But you know what? I, I, I got so many other cool things for it. And I don't I don't go on to YouTube now and every time I see the Blaze Fest copy going, oh, those motherfuckers, that's mine. I'm gonna I'm gonna go type in my name and go, I taped who the fuck cares? Who fucking cares. It's from fans to fans. That's why you bootleg. You know what? I, I stopped bootlegging. Um, you know, in, in the mid two thousands, I loved when the, when the instant lives came out, I didn't, that was the coolest thing they ever did. I didn't have to fucking tape anymore. It it was a look. I didn't like sitting up there with my fucking camera trying. I love that. You know what? Jeez, for 30 bucks, I get a fucking soundboard of the show. We're done doing this. (laughs) You know what I mean? I was happier than hell. Well, yeah. And it was no different with my 79 (laughs) photos from the in-store. You know, oh, yeah. and then I put them out, everybody shared them. It's like, well, so what? You know what I'm going to do? Retire on them? Give me a break. I was, I put them out to share them with everybody. Oh my God. That is, that is so fucking true. Like, oh, yeah. you made it. A... Yeah, yeah. Look, it's you like, didn't... hey man, somebody Come... ripped off the thing I ripped off, man. And that, it, it, yeah, so it's like I couldn't not talk, we couldn't not talk about this today because we're all just reading this thread going. Just laughing. We're just laughing. They were like, <sighs> some of these fans have no understanding. I, for me, it was just like, you don't understand copyright, people. Listen, fans, you don't understand the copyright. You don't own your, you don't own the elder music on your elder CD. And when when you you don't have the rights to sell that, to change that, to reproduce, you don't. You can give your CD to somebody, but you don't own the music on it. You will never own the music on it. On your vinyls, on your DVDs, none of that stuff. It's not yours. I have, I have five five to six hundred shows in my in my video wall, which I've never done with. There are a ton, and I mean a fucking ton, that aren't on YouTube now. Because who wants Springfield 88? Or I mean, it's just, just not something that many people would care about. You know what I mean? I, I've got tons and tons and tons of shows that aren't on YouTube now. And you know what? So what? If I ever get... I, I, to be fair now, I, I keep in mind, I've watched every one, or every one of the shows that I have at least once or partway through. And, and, and it also goes back to when, when Kurt was on. Remember all those shows? I made him a couple hundred shows just because he was doing a Kiss project. So it was cool that someone like myself, who was so passionate about collecting this, he could come to one place and know that all you know, as much Kiss as possible, is going to be coming his way. And and that's and that's fun as a collector, you know. But at, at the end of the day, I don't own any of this stuff. No more than the people who have a copy of the Ivy. You know, keep in mind. The guys, the guys who bought it off of off of Julian, Julian still has the copy. You know, Kurt still has a copy. And there's copies everywhere, which goes back to these things too. Kiss has a copy. Yeah, Kiss has a copy. You know, people made copies of these. I'm sure between the time they were recorded in the '70s and by the time I got them decades later. This whole thing is just so silly. When you, here, here's the silliest thing. You see the people get all upset about it. People have nothing to do with it. 
I know. <laughs> what do you fucking care? <laughs> it's just, it's funny. And, and guys, just as you know, a little, a little inside baseball, the three of us were like, did you see some of those comments? And we're like, we should talk about it on the air because this is what we'd talk about if we were in a bar. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Totally. You know, just, and, and getting to Kurt, if I remember correctly, when Kurt first tried to auction the tape, I'm pretty sure that in the description he said, you are not purchasing the rights to the recording of the iVideo. You have no rights to release it, distribute it, sell it, anything along those lines. And and you know what? I've seen that. Here, let me give you, let me give you guys a real-world example. So... I'm doing some work with the Sausalito record plant, which is one of the three original record plants. There's New York, Los Angeles, and Sausalito. LA is the only one that's open. Sausalito is the building is still here. There's we're doing some stuff with it. So I've been going through the inside of the building, and there was like a closet. Which is cool, by the way. I, I love went in. The I opened up a closet door, and there was a pile of tapes, two-inch master tapes, two-inch masters. And just on the very top, what I saw was from 19, I think it was 95, 96, Azoff Music, Irving Azoff, huge guy in the music business, a band called, and you guys probably know this, Soul Circus. It was um, Neil Schoen's and Jeff Scott Soto's side project band. Yep. I came across at least two two-inch reels. Each reel had two songs from the album on there. Now, I can't do any. I can hold that tape. I can hug that tape. I can sleep with that tape. I can show you pictures of that tape. If we had a two-inch tape deck in the studio still, I could put it up there and I could play it and listen to it. I don't own the freaking music that's on those two-inch tapes. Azoff mm -hmm. Music owns that music that's on the tape. I can't walk out of the studio with those two-inch tapes and go on to um, the street and say, hey, you want to buy a recording? You can do whatever you want. With I can't. I don't have that right. Mike, take, Mike, take it a step further. Why do you think not only Kiss, but Aerosmith, all of these bands are re-recording their hits because they don't own the They Masters don't even own them. The label does. They mm -hmm. want to get their own rights back. You know, that re-record album that KISS did was done for one reason only. It wasn't for us as fans. It wasn't to be a bonus disc in Walmart. Two words, Scooby and Do. Did you hear the songs that are on that? Were they the original versions from Destroyer? Because pri who prior to those re-recordings, when a, just anybody, anybody wanted to do a commercial with the song Beth, the only version that existed was owned by the record label. The record label can license it, cut the deal, and do everything they want, and Kiss is out of the picture. And and Alice Cooper's done this. Every major classic artist has done this. Now, Kiss records all of what they think are going to be the best songs that... It's not songs they think are going to be favorites of us, the fans. It's songs they think could have some commercial appeal. They re-record them. They paid for it they own them it's all of theirs now when somebody says i want to license heavens on fire for a tv commercial they can do it with kiss and the label gets nothing it's who it's, it's who owns the recording it's who owns the music yes the guys on youtube who uh who are posting concerts and film clips and tv clips not so much. They don't own them. The 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 boot the, boot, like the, the bootleggers and the hoarders who spent thousands of dollars to sp save and preserve this stuff. God bless them and thank you, but they don't own the recording. Well, and and another thing I'd like to say is I'd like to talk a little bit about the hoarders. All right. So think of it from their perspective for a moment. Okay. So Mark has all this stuff, and I forgot to actually look on your iPad or your. Um, 
laptop when we were in LA because we just had so much other stuff going on. But he has all this really cool stuff. I'd now, be he's careful what you little... might find on that laptop, actually. Well, there's something to be said for that too. <laughs> but you know, I was hoping he'd at least keep it in a fold, you know, separate folder that said I don't know, is... Monday morning. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, but. Mark is very generous. He's more than happy to share any of that stuff with you if you want to watch it in his presence, which is really generous because he doesn't have to even do that. But why, if Mark paid whatever amount of money for anything that he paid for, should he ever be obligated to share that with anybody? Because he found it first, he paid the money, and it's his copy. He is not in a position where he has to share it, just like any of the other people that you want to call hoarders. The reason they do this is to avoid this sort of nonsense. So before you start picking at people, why don't you go out and find some stuff of your own, spend the money, own it for yourself, and then you can make the decision as to whether you make a copy or share it with someone or you keep it to yourself. Because until you've been on that side of the fence, I think it's a little disingenuous to complain like it's, you know, somehow everyone's, you know, right to, to have They're in- they're entitled to have it. Yeah. I tell you what? Here's here's what you're here's what I wasn't entitled to anything. I worked my ass off to get these things. I had to cut deals, and these things were long before the fucking internet. I'm gonna fucking punch you. <laughs> <laughs> but long, you know what? No one's gonna fucking realize what that is till the YouTube one comes. I was like, yeah. what's that? <laughs> Never but, make the on those shit. <laughs> but you know what? Years ago, um. You, you just tried to keep a good rep. Going back to something Tommy talked about, I think one of the things that really helped me back in the bootlegging days was I never ran my tapes down. If somebody wanted my first gen from Cleveland, I just sent them my first gen. You know what I mean? Because I expected that in return. And I could always bring throw that in someone's face. I gave you my actual first gen, so you better give me your actual first gen. And that's how it worked. And again, you know what? The, the great part about doing that, and this is just conversation stuff, I'd get stuff like Smashing Pumpkins that I didn't want, but I knew I could trade it for somebody, you know, who had a, maybe had a Kiss thing, especially the the PAL stuff. Because right in 97, when the shows were being taped, I had to go out and find someone with a, a PAL converter. Because in the 97 tour, when they were playing in Europe, I wanted first gens. I'd get them. You know what else I got? I used to ask my friends to tape the news stations i got that great thing from brussels belgium they did that really really nice um uh what do you call it uh press conference and stuff like that back then you had to be really hot on your heels doing it and and at that time too email was around so i mean emailing was was really helping out too but man getting getting back to that you had to keep your nose clean and 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 be a good reliable source well you know a lot of this stuff came about well that's what gave me the opportunity to buy the other things because the people knew if i they were going to make a deal they knew i'd pay them you know to your point about keeping your nose clean i i i can only suspect this might have been partially the case there's probably hoarders who don't release stuff because they don't want to get in potential legal trouble for leasing stuff Um, meaning you know you put a tape out video or audio and somehow it gets traced back to you you can be you know it depends on what kind of mood that band or that label most likely the record label is in but they could make an example out of you and it's happened before we've seen we've seen stories where all of a sudden somebody decides hey we know this in the kiss world there was a certain kiss expo that got raided for selling bootlegs all of a sudden, it was decided, for whatever reason, we need to shut it down. So, you know, as a hoarder, do you want to do that? Do you want to risk getting in legal trouble? I mean, this is just me personally speaking. If I ever owned anything and I was going to release it, I would never put my name on it. I would never put my logo on it. I would never release it on my own YouTube channel. I'd never release it on my own website. I'd freaking make fakes of everything and just it shows up out there because I don't I would never want it to be traced back to me as the source of leaking something that I didn't have the copyrights to. 
Well, and, and speaking of that, here's a great example, okay? Back in 92, uh, during the Guns N' Roses Allu- Use Your Illusions tour, two pro shots leaked out, the Chicago and the Oklahoma City. And the band was not happy. And my understanding from people that I know that were around that camp, I mean, I could give a shit about Guns N' Roses, but they were asking everybody, where did these come from? Who do you know this guy? Do you know that guy? Is there someone in this particular city? Blah, 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 blah. And this went on for six, eight months where they were trying to find the person who leaked those two shows. And so it's a it's a big deal. I, I will tell you, I, I had calls and, and I, I think I brought this up on the show before. I, I remember Liz, I'd come home from work. And Liz is like MTV Studios called. <laughs> they want you to call them, you know, and and. You know, they they would ask me about certain footage if I knew where it came from because they knew that I was in that. I ran in those circles. I, that happened more than a couple times. You know what I mean? Like like just like just Tommy said, those band managers back then they wanted to know where this shit was coming from. And especially the only reason a, is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, especially a pro shot. Well, yeah, and the only reason that any of this has changed is because of technology. And, you know, to go back to our wonderful discussion, um, what was it, about a month or so ago when when we were, um, when we had um, uh, the record guy. uh, Robert Conti? No, 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 the uh, label. Oh, 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 Danny Goldberg. Yeah, sorry, Dan, I just... Sorry, brain fire. Sorry, Danny. Um, Danny on, he, you know, he all, he answered the ultimate question that what changed everything was that the computer companies and software companies are much more powerful than the record labels. And I'd be willing to bet you that you could even say that now about the film studios, that they are more powerful than the film studios. That's the only thing that stopped this because now, like Mark was saying, you could just walk in with your video camera and you could film the whole thing and no one thinks twice of it. But it was not that way back in the 80s and the 90s at all or even into the early 2000s. So it's changed a lot. And I think people have just kind of given up. Yeah, well, they, they've certainly thrown up the white flag. And I, I know I've shared this story before. I remember filming an A show. I almost got my ass kicked by a couple of bouncers. You know, and if it wasn't for my quick thinking, I wouldn't have kept the tape I, I think i told you the story I, I think it was one of the first times i was on i hit the fucking thing on the standby because i knew they'd want i knew they'd want the tape and then i i'm like look you that you when you grabbed my camera you know you broke my 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 camera and i'm gonna sue you i'm fucking I'm, you know i hear these three fucking guys ready to kick my ass and i'm like you broke my fucking camera man i'm gonna fucking sue you you know all this other shit and i'm like all right, just give me just I just want my camera back and the tape, you know, they couldn't get it out because it didn't say standby. It was just this little switch on the fucking bottom that did put it on standby and they couldn't get the fucking tape out. And the whole time I'm screaming and keep in mind, video cameras back then were a big deal. I'm screaming, you know, you broke my camera and they're like, here, just get out of here. You can't take what I mean now. Shit, you show I last time we were at Ace Tommy. Fuck, I'm about 100 people were fucking probably. Yeah. No, no big deal because nobody cares, you know, but back then, boy, they cared and they cared a lot enough to fucking want to kick your ass or at least, mm-hmm. at least make you miserable. That's for sure. And now the bands like it because it's more exposure on YouTube and Facebook and because they need it. It's it's just like with real estate. When the builders are cranking and building a ton of new homes, they want nothing to do with the real estate agents because people are just coming to them. The minute that the market turns and the buildings stop moving like they are moving with new construction, then they're begging real estate agents to show up. It's kind of what's going on right now in the music industry to a certain degree. I'm sure there's still some that are completely against it, whatever, but those are people that are just short-sighted at this point because you want as much exposure, I think, as you can get. Well, look, look at what Polygram did when we talked about uh, things back when MTV took off. Right. They're like, no, pay us. You know, it's really that, sh- like you said, short sightedness. All, mm-hmm. all this, you know, it's funny, all these concepts intertwine. You know what I mean? Like you just said, you know, they fought the bootlegs forever, but now you can bring your camera in and then the, the, end, the end result is, fuck, we're getting more promotion. I look at stuff like right. 
when they just played last weekend, there's a couple thousand hits already on, you know, them playing Detroit Rock City. Whereas, you know. Right. And which is great because it keeps and see to me the bootleg thing that what was great about that is is that it kept people interested during the time frame when the band wasn't doing anything. And and the perfect example for me with that is I remember going to these record shows and I would see these Beatle collectors, snob snobbish Beatle collectors that were bitching about all these bootlegs. So back in the day there were legitimate, well not legitimate, but well known bootleg CD labels as well as vinyl. And uh, I don't remember the names anymore, but there was this one, Swinging Pig, they were one of the big ones. And they would release, I mean, imagine if you were a Kiss fan that could have every song off of The Elder have its own entire CD of Kiss putting that song together. And that's what you had for Beatles, like the Revolver album or whatever. And people were just bitching about that, going, this is just wrong. And And I'm thinking, you are so stupid. You have all of this cool stuff that it's there if you want it. You know? And to me, that's the purpose that the bootlegs served more than anything else. And now I think it's turned into a promotional tool. But what I don't understand, and I think it's less the bands and more the... the, um, management at that particular venue is there's some that are have been real ball busters about bringing just my still camera in and i'm like what do you fucking care you're you're making ten dollars an hour standing at the front so someone doesn't jump on stage that's your job not to stop somebody who's standing next to me from taking a picture of the band that's the stuff that i don't get tommy two years ago i i had front row for deep purple in windsor ontario and the guy stopped because I, I just had my camera like has a wristlet on it. It was just a regular yeah. hand camera. And they made me go put it back in my car. And I'm like, hey, a-hole, I could take pictures with my fucking phone, too. I just didn't feel like sticking this thing in my fucking pocket. He's like, oh, there's no photography. I said, you're going to fucking confiscate everybody's fucking cell phone as they walk. It's just two years ago. Oh, yeah. Like, such a fucking jack. Again, here's a guy who probably, you know has no authority in his life and now the first time he does he's gonna you know make sure it's uh you know put his fist down like it's uh, uh you know the end of the world I, I, I that kind of stuff just drives me up the fucking wall and yeah, just, and, and yeah and my advice to you to people that are listening to this fight for your rights because most of the time the band doesn't care i was at mystic lake two weeks ago which is a big uh, casino here not far from my house and hairball was playing and michael actually asked me to come out and take some pictures. They're, they're looking for new stuff for upcoming shows. They want more advertising. I'm like, absolutely, we'll come out. We never miss it whenever we're here, they're around. And I, Sean, the road manager, gave me a freaking patch, you know? So I'm up front taking pictures. Sure enough, after the third song, they're trying to kick me out of the area. And I'm like, I've got an all-access pass on. And the guy says to me, well, that's just one of those iron-ons. And I had to walk his ass back to the the booth, to the recording booth, the mixer, and have Sean, who was busy working production, tell this guy, leave him alone. So more often than not, if you guys find yourself in this particular situation, it's that particular security guard and not the band. It's the venue. I've had that happen to me when I was working with KISS. I, I remember it happened to me at Madison Square Garden on the Psycho Circus Tour. And, and you're my, working for KISS. I had my all-access laminate on. All-access laminate means I can go anywhere in the frickin' building I want. Mm-hmm. Anywhere. No restrictions. And I don't need a ticket. I don't need anything. All-access means I can do anything I want. And it's showtime, and I'm running around out in the audience taking photos. And I'm main floor, and the the main floor Madison Square Garden if I remember correctly had two aisles on the main floor like a section A B and C and then an aisle between each one so I would I would get like in the end of each of those aisles and I'd have an unobstructed wide view of the stage from main floor because security doing their job doesn't let people stand in the aisles thank you appreciate that I'm taking pictures taking pictures security guard up front all of a sudden he's like points at me and I'm like you know remember it's in the middle of a kiss concert I'm like what you know I can't fucking hear what you're saying he comes walking up to me and he points the camera and get it out of there and then all I do is I 
you know, I pull my laminate out because a lot of times they don't see the laminate. So I pull the laminate right. out. He goes, I don't care. Get out. Get out. So then I freaking jumped into his ear and I'm like, see that freaking guy on stage? See the guy who's prancing around in those boots up on stage? That's my fucking boss. He told me to take these pictures. If you don't want me to take pictures, you go talk to him right now. But he's not going to be very happy to stop the show to talk to you because you're mad because I can't take pictures because my past gives me that permission. And I just pushed and I pushed and I pushed and he finally was like, okay. But you're right. You know, sometimes you get that security guard who just thinks they're, you know, sergeant of arms or something and they're going to impress everybody. It's like, no, you don't know what the frick you're talking about. And some of the other guys are, are fantastic. Some of the security guards are the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet. Well, they, then there's, a, yeah, there, there's other security guards who will see your pass, and they'll move the fans out of your way for you. They're like, you know, mm-hmm. he's got a pass. He can come up here. Give, get out of his way. I'm like, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, uh, some uh, late-breaking kiss news here. Um, by oh, When this airs a week from now. <laughs> uh, kiss Indie Expo, April 15th. April 15th. Oh, Jesus, it's yep. March already. The, I know. The amazing lead time that expo always gives us. Jesus. It's and it's their official logo and, and everything. Who's, does it list who the guest is? It does, does not. It does not. It just says, book, book your rooms now, more info to come. So. Well, I, you know, it's probably going to either be Tommy or Eric or both. We shall see. We shall see. Um, I'm trying to think because I think I got something going on April. I know I do. I don't remember what it is, but I've got something going on. So it's like that's just not enough time. Well, I, I I may have to readjust something. That's not. Hold on. That's not Easter weekend, is it? No, I think it's the week before. Okay. Um. No, huh? Easter is April sixteenth. Ooh. That's what I mean. It's the next day. Anybody? That's what I mean. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that I will not be. Uh... Nope. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll drive there and drive. Drive. So that's a Saturday then. Yeah, fifteenth is a Saturday. Oh man, I, that's going to be tough. Yeah, because I got to be here Easter morning. We go to church. We have a big deal. What if they did a, 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 a church service at the expo? <laughs> All joking aside, it's a big uh, big family day. Yeah, Bring the family day. to the expo. <laughs> if they get enough kids in their lives, you know, to, <laughs> more. Oh, man. I, well, yeah, I'm just thinking about it financially. Maybe they got the room a little cheaper for, uh, the day before Easter. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I wish them the best. I hope it goes great. Oh, we'll promote the hell out of it. I love those guys. Yeah. Keith and Steve, they do a great job. And I'm not ruling it out. I might I might just cruise there for the day and then boy, that's long because it's like four hours from my house. I have to fly. Yeah, and it, yeah, it's just a long day. But by by, by the way, Tommy, uh I'm thinking of doing the um Minnesota show in July. That's what you said. So we'll have to do a Minnesota meetup. But, you know, that show is on a Saturday, and I'm going to be at Rockfest Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then half a Saturday to get there on time. So we're going to have to figure out, depending on what you and the family does. So when yeah. you get to we're, that we're going to probably, no. we were going to do a trip to Minnesota for the family vacation anyway, and now that there's a KISS yeah. show, I'm like, okay, let's work it all around that. So we'll uh, we'll get everything in the near future, ironed out and let everybody know. But we'll do another meetup at some location on some afternoon or evening. It'll be fun. Yep. Yep. I look yeah, forward to it. By the way, um, I, my lovely and talented just did just walk in the house. Uh, I know my dinner is, is, is just arrived. <laughs> my di- I put in a my, good my dinner has just arrived. <laughs> well, Tommy, that would be our cue, wouldn't it? Yes, yes that's our cue to wrap up the show because well, Mark's. Really Mark's, hope you enjoyed the show today, guys. <laughs> Mark's dinner has arrived. God. 
It, that part just never gets old in this show. Mm-mm. How, how dinner yeah. rules everything when it comes to a recording. So I'm here's, here's, here's my world right now. My I haven't seen my daughter in a month or whatever, three weeks. She's home. Her I have to drive her and Liz to the airport. I, we have to leave here at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning because I'm taking them. We have a house down in Florida. and I, Well, my family does. I don't want to so much my dad's. My mom and dad's. I was gonna say you've down. got a house in Florida. Tommy's got a game room with a pool table. You guys are making way too much money off this show. Tommy's got a gay room. What? <laughs> <laughs> sure if that was the... true, you would have been there already. <laughs> you have your own booth. <laughs> All Nogahide. <laughs> That's a great God. word. No. <sighs> Well, can we wow. be done? Can we be hey, done? hey, Mark, how, how about this? Can you, at the spur of the moment here, pull up a not Spencer's crap? Yeah, I probably could. You know, that's initially why we, the only reason we hired you. It is true. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we, he hasn't signed his contract, so. Yeah, I'll pull up something. <laughs> He's going again. <laughs> We made Mark get up, and it wasn't for dinner. <laughs> so, okay, so we will figure something out for the Minnesota meetup. So you guys that can attend, just figure something will happen in July. Hopefully Kevin can come in with uh, and, his, and with I'm, his and girlfriend. And I'm pretty sure that the meetup will not will be separate from the show. Oh, yes, yeah, it we're, has We're going to be at the KISS show itself anyway, so if you're there and you see us, cool. But we'll do a separate meetup somewhere. Oh, and guess who I'm bringing with me? Just guess. Um, Will. Bingo. <laughs> and I think that it would be only the thing to do to have him bring his love gun album cover with him. Dude, this guy's way past his 15 minutes. I know, but it's funny as hell. <laughs> he can take a poll while he's there. So be ready. I'm not even going to touch that comment. (laughs) God, what is he doing? Probably stopped the piss, too. No, I didn't. I'm too lazy to play. When are you going to play one of those platinum albums? These are cool, because these are from from some of the earliest Kiss Expos. This is from London, Ontario. Hmm. Okay. Just, these are my flyers that I had framed. But I mean, this is this is kind of this is kind of what I'm talking about. Going back to these, you know, the only people who are here are the fucking most diehard. That's what. That's when Kiss would let you use the Kiss logo in an yes. expo. And, correct. Look at how different you know things were. You know, a couple years later when they got all big time. Are those real me, autographs? You know, Kiss, no, but I, I, I happened to grab this because it was with it. Um, my Mark, when I met, I met Mark St. John a few times. Mm-hmm. But I one time, the first time I met him at an expo, he just signed a piece of paper and I just put it in with oh, the Oh, Speaking post. of Mark St. John, did you two guys meet Eddie at the LA Kiss Expo? Mark's manager who was on the show? You know what? I wasn't on that show, meaning, I, you know, so I didn't really have much background. I didn't, I didn't see him. There was, we met, we talked to so many people, you know, I'm just, it, 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 you know, certain ones like, you know, Jay, uh, right. and, and, um, Greg and, and those guys, but man, I wouldn't have known him if I bumped into him unless he said something. Sure. Plus Tommy was spending most of his time in the men's room, that back stall. He was, uh, not ladies, not the ladies room. No. <laughs> such a dreamer hey look i told you i look people just so you know when we first got there the first thing he of course he had to do is go take a dump right so when he's in the bathroom i'm rifling through his luggage i found a bottle of ether i found duct tape and and i and i and i found some rope so i got rid of that did you find his bieber mask no no Uh -uh. no i didn't all right can we go home what the hell is that noise Huh? Bren Irons is calling. Oh, all right. Yeah, this is looking for Florida. Have fun on your trip. What were we? Okay. We had a question we were going to ask Liz earlier. What? 
What was yes, it? I did. No, I won't say that. <laughs> does meat? Does, does ketchup work like pineapple? Think of uh, the Sex in the City episode when uh, Samantha made her boyfriend eat all the pineapple. Does ketchup oh. work the same way? <laughs> <laughs> And I would think that if it, I would think that if it had a red t- red tint to it, you'd want to get him to the emergency room. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. All right, let's feed Mark. Let's feed him. Okay. All right. So homework. All right. Homework. Um, if you're a hoarder, let us know. <laughs> and if you and if you disagree with what we're saying, and you're one of the people that we're posting on that thread that went on for days and you feel very uh, compelled to share why you think we're wrong and that guy shouldn't have done what he did i'd love to hear about it yeah we'd love to laugh at you here too <laughs> <laughs> maybe now you won't post we got a podcast to do it on <laughs> I'll go eat dinner. oh mark is in such a good mood today yeah, hey, man. He's fired up. That groin is all 100% healed up. Look, Greg groin played injury. last Monday night, too. You should have seen it. He got a brand new stick. It was Mr. Moves. Mr. Okay. Moves. Had a couple of ribs removed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You've got your homework. Head over to Facebook.com. That's Three Sides of the Coin. Three Sides of the Coin.com. YouTube, Spreaker, um, SoundCloud, everywhere we are. Don't forget. You can go to shop.threesidesofthecoin.com and buy a, a Shocker Black T-shirt for 10 bucks. Help clear out that inventory so we can get our new shirts the in there. They're on the way. <laughs> God, it's like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This felt like a much better show than last week. Last week sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sticking hey. around I checked today. We're like already over two thousand views. I'm like, I thought I like, man, this is the week people are going fuck these assholes. Did I not <laughs> warn everybody? We warned everybody. We put that at the beginning. At twenty four hours later, we're fucking at over two thousand. It just proves it just proves one thing: they love us, not what we talk about. Ugh. No, they're just bored. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three oh, sides of the yeah. coin. We're out of here next week. Thanks for tuning in. Take three sides of the coin with you anywhere. Download your five-star rated free smartphone app today and listen on your Android or Apple smartphone. Visit android.threesidesofthecoin.com or ios.threesidesofthecoin.com. Want to get your official Three Sides of the Coin logo and Shocker T? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. For interviews and media inquiries, contact Izzy at izzypresleyproductions.com. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. You love the show. Go to iTunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.